We've got Martha Sun, Daniel, and an egg. Just kidding, it's Ryan. They're playing video games. Shut up, it's about to. S and we're back yet again. Still here. Mario Hello. Maker. Hello. What up? We're on guessing? Luigi's Hungry Horse, is that correct? <laughs> 20 people played, 0% finished. Horse wants to eat grass, go underground to defeat unsafe pesticides by cereal soup. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So, ladies and gentlemen, three, two, one, go. Whoever finishes it first gets the first clear, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, the, the guaranteed world record. Reach the goal after defeating one Monty Mole. That's fair. Yeah, That's you fair. Reach the goal percent. after defeating all one Monty Mole. All oh. One. <laughs> you think we gotta find him? He's probably, I'm gonna go ahead and take a guess, underground. Mm. Matt, this with the deep lore. Is, yeah, yeah, everything has some deep lore if you try hard enough. Oh, this looks interesting. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Oh Ooh. my God. This is, not, they've lied to you, Daniel. <laughs> this is not a five to ten percent clear rate level. There's yeah. That um, first obstacle is wow. a is a nightmare. Woo, that's rough. I'm up for it because I feel no fear. But yeah, we could do. It'd this. be nice to have a checkpoint like just right before you do it, or you know. So you just don't. Alternatively, make run. maybe don't make you run across the big horse sculpture to get into the the pipe at the start of it. But then how will you know the theme? <laughs> <laughs> or I guess the flip side is would you want one of the horse legs to be raised? That would work, yeah. Right, you could right. Run, run through the undercarriage. I like how you know it's a horse. Its legs are pipes. Mm. Just go into its leg, it'll be easier. Or just like put the pipe at the start and then at the end have you run past the horse. Yeah, there you go. It's called game design, sweetheart. <laughs> Look it up. Or just dispose of the whole horse part to begin with, you know? So I have a, like, a little brother biological thing to bring up. <clears throat> um, yeah, what? Uh, this, Should uh, we be talking about this? <laughs> no, I mean, like, uh, it's meant for a biological discussion, not for, like, a Minkus discussion. <laughs> okay. So I guess there was, like, a big... So when you go on Twitter, like, you look at... I go to Explore, and it'll show me, like, curated... Tweets like Detroit Pistons, uh, you know, Call of Duty, uh, whatever, Google Big Brother. Burning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, so there was something, and I always get fed Twitch streamer stuff. Oh, okay. And so there was like, I guess a big Twitch. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, no. Is this, is this sell your bed? No, 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 no. It's not sell your bed, but I do want to talk about that with you guys. <laughs> This this was a, like a month ago. It's like there's a big I guess like Twitch streamer got married or something, mm. and it showed up there, and it showed someone on a horse that was you could say excited. <laughs> oh yeah, you're talking and, about uh, Sacriel's wedding. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But like, and I didn't like that was yeah that 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 picture is fucking great. I've never seen that before. Like I I didn't know that that's how. You never heard the saying hung like a horse, Dan? Well, it's, well, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like there's like um What are you talking about then? I'm there's confused. like an envelope and then there's the extension. I didn't know about the envelope. Of all people, I would not have expected you to bring this up. <laughs> no, I, I'm asking from a biological standpoint. Like <laughs> it's not like Well, uh, you're the biology major, Ryan. Take it away. I don't it's know. It's not consistent I, with like humans. I've never seen a horse um, aroused, to be honest. So uh, neither have I, I. Well, you have now, right? Right, but unintentionally from a. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to say it's like another <laughs> character judgment. I'm just saying I got no, uh, I got no insight. I just see Dan actively deleting all his porn oh my history. God. Dude, I made it through the very first section of the level. I've only uh, which part? Just the cannon part. Like the bill, bullet bill part or the whole yeah. thing? Uh, I made it through the section with the bullet bill. I, I keep dying at the last bullet bill. I, I bounced just too high. Yeah, again, Dan, you were lied to. Yeah, so just to get more context, not about that, is that there's a, there's a Google form where people submit their levels and they give it the title and the clear rate. And this person called this, what, 5 to 10% clear rate? Yeah, is a little... Um, 5 to 10% when nobody's cleared it. 
So that was just right yeah, out of their ass. I'm going to uh, see previously I had operated under the assumption that everybody is a bad actor and they're trying to trick us. <laughs> what I think happens way more often is people are just like, well, I beat it in 10 tries. So probably roughly around a 10% clear rate. You're like, nah, dude. <laughs> That's not how it works. You built the level and practiced it 500 times when you were making it. <laughs> oh, God. These bullet bills. All right, so to progress the conversation, do you really want to? No, no, no. I'm saying Ryan talked about sell your bed. I I heard passively about somebody who tweeted about if you're not making enough money, do dumb shit so you can keep streaming. His, he, his central premise was if you don't have enough money to get a good setup to start streaming, you know, you should... I mean, the... His premise is bad to begin with, in my opinion. His premise is, uh, you know, if you really want to make your dream of being a streamer happen, but you're like broke right now, sell whatever, grind whatever you have to grind to get there. You know, if you have to sell your bed, if you have to, you know, feed yourself garbage food that will lead to you being like malnourished and sick, then like do it. Like n don't let anything get in the way of your dream. Which I think is a bad premise to begin with. A hundred percent. And it is, the reason I think it's a bad premise, because people might not be with me on that one, because it's kind of common advice, is whenever that comes from someone that's successful, it makes it seem like the only reason they're successful is because they sacrificed more than everybody else. There's a lot of people out there on Twitch and YouTube who sacrificed a lot and got, like, nowhere. Yeah. I would love to hear how they feel about... That's probably know, a much more common story. Yeah, how than... they feel about selling their bed. But anyway, so yeah, his 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 premise was, you know, sell your bed, sleep on a $10 air mattress, um, stop ordering Uber Eats and eat only ramen and Chef Boyardee. <laughs> and then number three was my favorite. Number three was don't buy skins. And I was like, you're giving adult financial advice? Number <laughs> right? three is like, don't buy skins? But <laughs> And then what happens to those people who sold everything and then a year later, they're still nowhere. Yeah, now you're well, sleeping on a ten dollar air mattress, yeah. eating ramen so noodles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sleep but in a like, sleeping bag, you idiot. I I don't feel bad at all for dunking on it because I think it's horrible advice, and he has a a lot of uh, like young followers who honestly need more of a reality check than he's apparently willing to give them. Oh god, I made it. Um, but uh, you know, I just I hate when people give advice that doesn't factor in the role that like luck and timing play because like the reason that this guy's famous i'm not saying he doesn't have talent but he happened to be like right place right time good at fortnite when fortnite became the most popular game ever made <laughs> if he if he was born five years later it would have been a much harder road for him if he was born five years earlier maybe he wouldn't have the time to dedicate the full-time streaming because he'd have another career and like people that relied on him to make a steady income you know yeah <laughs> Well, let me play devil's advocate here. By the way, Ooh. Dude, I, Ooh. I can't I can't get past <laughs> walk over thwomps now. Um, take the boot with you and yeah. go fast forehead. But do the thwomps fall fast enough where I can run? Because I tried. You you they... gotta you can't run. You gotta you get... like bait them with a the jump. I think. Yeah. Okay. Good shot. All right. So so devil's advocate here. I I think his delivery is is poor. The messaging, yeah. but the the uh, i think some of the message is okay like don't buy dumb stuff yes i agree oh, with yeah. your overhead but also mine would be get a job and then do this in your free time correct yeah. and like, that correct. that is part of where he lost me as well when he was like obviously you can get a job but it's gonna <laughs> cut down on your time to make content and I'm like, <sighs> no you could work a full-time or part-time job and have plenty of time to make content just don't watch 100 episodes of billions and watch 18 other youtubers you know what right. i mean like and there's enough time in the day yeah i mean like uh i mean dang you're a good example of time management you got another uh another profession and then like two children so i'm just like you know it's the same like sometimes people have talked up my work ethic and i'm like i think my work ethic is like it's pretty good don't get me wrong but like it's also just not that hard I no, I'd say you're probably in the top three percent of work ethic. I don't yeah, know. if you're not recording your stream and if you're not streaming, you're streaming with Kate. You know, like you're you're always. I do. You're I always mean, I work working. a lot, but I I mean, I I take uh, I take time off as well. Like oh, I have like yeah. dedicated uh, 
like a dedicated day off, which a lot of streamers don't have. And, you know, particular like YouTubers, I, I do think a lot of them are just a little lazy, but you know, it's, it's a rude thing to say, but <laughs> it's also <laughs> my honest opinion. Um, but streamers, I'm like, they're, they're maybe like lazy in a different way, but they can work like 13 hour days, six days a week. Oh yeah. And then like on the seventh day, they're like, sorry, I can't stream today. I'm really sick. <laughs> <laughs> There's no checkpoints in this level? No, it's it's like a one screen, uh, a one screen bop. I'll tell you, the dude, you know he has a bad message because he had to post like a two minute clarification video where he went, when I said sell your bed, obviously I don't literally mean take your bed and sell it. I mean, sell your things. And you're like, okay, well. It's just, you know, he's young. I I don't I don't bear much of a grudge, but you know, he's he's obviously Hi. nice. He's obviously like 18, 19, 20, and he, he he grinded and got famous and thinks that makes him an authority on how to do it. But <laughs> Does take, it? take it from the people with the you know, the the silver hairs to prove it, you know? There's a there's a huge element of, of luck and you know, there's ebbs and flows in the industry. Uh you know, Fortnite's huge now. You can afford a Lamborghini. Maybe it'll be huge in 2022. Maybe people will be like, hey, remember when that game is big? And then maybe in 2025, people will be like, yo, let's go back and start a Fortnite renaissance, you know? It's like man Minecraft right now. It's like, that's exactly what I'm getting at, yeah. Well, I think the other thing too that helps, at least from my perspective, is that, like, I, I'm aligned. Like, I feel like my actions and my work maps my goal you know yeah. you know where i'm at. like i'm not trying to you know be the largest on twitch i'm trying right. to be able to yeah. do this and have fun and you know run it as a business but you know like i don't know i feel like you can be you just have to find out what's happy what makes you happy like maybe that is what you want to do maybe you want to stream one day a week but whatever it is i feel like a lot of people default to being hey i want to be the next whatever you know yeah, uh, that's ninja, true. where it's like maybe you'd be happy being the next yourself you know? and, so, and sometimes oh. like the, you know if that's what you get what gets you into it like sometimes it's a fine motivation as long as you understand like at some point like okay i can't be ninja because i'm not ninja i'm me but a lot of people do get into the streaming and youtubing because they want to be the next x person whatever yeah. if that's your motivation that's your motivation just understand that that motivation will only get you so far but but i think there's a lot of like area between ninja and the bottom where like you can make a good life for yourself if that's your primary goal or do it full time as long as everything else matches you know what i mean like i think like full time isn't you know seven figures for everyone you know what i mean like oh yeah no i think there's a, i think there's it's it's becoming more viable to have a realistic cross section somewhere in between where you oh, can I make a good living where you don't have to do this that. is my last try in this level by the way okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I've beaten it twice, and I'm getting sick of it. I I got to the 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 conveyor belt part, and I jumped and hit the goddamn spot. That's so. pretty much the end. But yeah. That's why I'm gonna give it my my one last go. I'm surprised I MLG'd it once I got through the bullets. But Ryan, Ryan, you're gonna be if Mathis beats this, whether he beats it or not, we we may have to eat some words on this one. How? So, oh, on the five to ten percent clear rate. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm, I'm done with this thing. Hold on, I'm, I'm going for the speed. You're going for record. one. All right, then screw it. I'm going again. Then. I just think like um, I don't know, like I've done well for myself, and people they always look for like something to attribute your success to, and they think like I'm insulting myself when I'm like actually like luck and timing played like a huge. <sighs> Fucking <laughs> well, timing played like a huge role in in my ability to get big, you know. When when I got big, like basically, I start. I was born at a time when I was an adult, when almost nobody was doing this. As yeah. a result, I got in when it was like not that saturated. So there's like step one, and then step two is like, you know, I played Isaac when it came out because I like Super Meat Boy. Nobody expected that game to blow up, and he, now we're here like eight years later. And people are like, you know, I still love Isaac. You know, it, it, I hitched my, my wagon to a horse that, that went way further than expected. And if, you know, maybe instead of playing Isaac that day, I play like, you know, Trine or something like that. That one little change, you know, could have had like a huge, like an order of magnitude on my ability to be successful. See, and again, I, I would push back. I mean, I, I agree is, to an extent. Dan will always back. push back. 
Yeah, cool. It's like there's inherent talent and you've had at bats, right? So it wasn't like, yeah. hey, my first YouTube video was Isaac. I, let me ask you, how many videos did you make before your first Isaac video? It's probably like a few hundred at least. Yeah, so it's not what like you, it's not like you fell into like a golden pile of coins. You had. No, I mean, at-bats. I agree, but at the same time, I think like anyone that is successful in this industry has had an element of luck in time. Yeah, of course. I, yeah. I definitely agree. Like, you know a lot of a lot of people have gotten the you know a certain size and then squandered it um for a variety of different reasons you know work ethic or you know can't control what comes out of their own mouth (laughs) (laughs) but uh you know yeah i I attribute a lot of it to luck there's like right place right time and then yeah probably right personality as well yeah for sure i don't know i like i just want to i want to have like lunch with this kid and he can pay for it because he's got he's apparently Twitter super followers. rich. <laughs> and I'm like, I just want to be like, you recognize, right? That because you were like 17 or 18 when Fortnite Battle Royale came out and you were awesome at it and you grinded. That's how you made it happen. Like if you're a, if you were 25 and that opportunity hadn't struck, you know, when it did, you might have been working at a bank with like uh, maybe a kid, maybe a wife. You can't just be like, honey, I'm going to quit my job at the bank to try to grind Fortnite full time, you know, <laughs> like where you're at, that place in time is very important. Like I was able to grind hard on YouTube basically because of when I was born. You know, if I'd been born like two years earlier, I would have been too busy in college. If I'd been born two years later, uh, you know, maybe I would have been too set into like a different career path. But I, it caught yeah. me, you know, like in my gap year. So I was able to be like, sure, you know, the timing's right. Let me give this a year while I'm still flexible and see if it works out. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like that's an element of that for all of our stories in some way or another. I mean, my the only reason I was able to dive into YouTube so hard is because, like, I had stuff going on in my life that had caused me to have to leave college for a bit and it opened up a whole lot of time. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to do YouTube videos because it's I enjoy watching it and I can do it. And I, I did it for like a year and a half before I had my first quote unquote successful video. Mm. Zomboid. But, yep. Zomboid. Zomboid was my ticket. That game is still my ticket. Like that game is it's like it's like your Isaac to a much, much smaller scale, obviously. But for my channel, like that's kind of what I've hitched my wagon to. And the game still gets updated and it's about to have its biggest update. And, you know, that's I'm not going to stop playing now because that's just part of it. But here's my thing. I agree. I I, I think Do we want to start Giesling Valley, by the way. Yeah, I'm good. Hey, we got three, two, two, one. one. Good luck. I agree. I, I, I think there's a percentage of it that's luck or timing I, I prefer to call it timing but i also think you guys are both persistent enough where you would have had more at bats where say for example ryan maybe it wasn't isaac but i still think you're pretty you probably i mean we never know because there's no simulation but yeah. you'd probably be pretty close to still being full-time on a large scale if you stuck with it yeah That's i mean I, I think it's possible but you know even like it's if Isaac hadn't come out uh, when it did, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, it comes out like six months later, I might have signed on to like teach for a second year in Korea uh, right. instead of like having it be in a, kind of like a suitable gap for myself. And then, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I decide like, hey, you know, I'm too stressed out from work. It's not worth, uh, you know, spending all this time being stressed out on the Internet as well. Like, but, but who knows is the other thing. Yeah. You know? You're right, there's no simulation. Yeah, can't can't figure it out. But, you know, I, I don't know. The, what it comes down to to me is I think that it's like the spirit of the advice is bad, in my opinion. I don't think that most people who don't make it on Twitch don't make <laughs> it due to lack of effort. I think it's just, it's hard. Like, you know, there's so many people trying to do it, for one. And, you know, like, again, back when I started, it was... I got lucky I had a YouTube following that I could pull over and just be mm-hmm. like, hey, can you like watch my stream? And then not that many people had discovered streaming at that point again. Like <laughs> it's pretty, the story of my career is like persistence plus being like in the first 10% of people <laughs> that got on a platform. I'm with you on basically. that. Basically. But you also had the insight to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I agree. Where and then, you know, I don't want to call it anything out indirectly, but like I'll see some people on Twitch and be like, hey, 900, it's my 900th straight day of streaming. Yeah. And it's like, I saw that person at 300 and nothing has changed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at some I, point I, I that, where it's like for you, you're like, hey, what if you you had the insight to go to Twitch or change something up? You know what I mean? 
It's not like you, the only thing on your channel is an Isaac. Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's if, if I could give myself a lot of credit for one thing, it is that, you know, years ago, I recognized that there's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> like one day, Isaac's not going to be there. and We don't know what day that'll be. Um, so I worked hard to diversify, whereas I think what has happened, particularly on Twitch, is a lot of streamers are like, you know, I got big for like League. And then, you know, League has ebbs and flows. Maybe they got like 25,000 concurrent viewers three years ago, and now they're they're getting like a thousand. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But, you know, I tried to recognize that. Yeah, I tried to recognize that that was coming, you know, downstream and do something about it. And I, I'm honestly like grateful, but also thankful because I'm like, now people are like, please stop playing Isaac. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no. <laughs> So, which is the way I want it to be, I think, because people people are desperate for other stuff. But anyway, I just I don't know. You know, I mean, I do think to to echo what Dan was saying early. I think a lot of people do just waste like more time than they realize. Oh, for sure. But dude, this Giesling Valley's tough. I mean, you guys get to checkpoint. Yeah, one okay. checkpoint. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, your yeah. whole life should not be about, you know, grinding to get big on YouTube and Twitch. But I do think that, you know, I won't, uh, you know, I would rather just ask you guys, like if you took an audit, uh, if, you, if you took out just work related stuff, how much free time do you have on like the average Monday to Friday? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have any when I go to bed. That doesn't seem, you don't work 16 hours a day. No, right? you say, so you're basically saying if you don't work. Wait, rephrase the question. I think I got confused. Because here's the thing, you know, like okay. all time streaming obviously counts and time recording obviously counts. Time setting videos counts. You know, if you're talking to collaborators about working and stuff or, like that, you're or, setting up like a project to be done. But like, I don't count their OBS because they're, <laughs> they're captured. Yeah, like? exactly. For like an hour. I, I mean, I would count that. I wouldn't count, you know, like for me, I wouldn't count going to the gym. That's stuff. I take that out of my free time to go to the gym. That's obvious. It's something that needs to be done, but it's not occupational. So your question is, how much free time do we have? Yeah, how, how much day? time do you like? How much time do you waste every day? Waste oh. every day. I probably waste like an hour a day. Yeah. Well, actually, that's not true because I, I don't consider the time in the gym wasted. So I, I probably have like. You're like, saying like mindless time. time. Well, I just mean I guess time that's like yours to do with what you will. That's my and, last two hours of every night. That's what I, I was, I have like probably two to three hours and I spend a lot of that just like, I don't know, like doing the dishes and, and cleaning the house, doing laundry, right. stuff like that. Yeah, I think like, uh, I'll quote unquote, be done working around like 11 and then from 12, 12 to one, like 11 to one is my time mm. just doing either stuff that I need to get done or just having dinner and just taking a breath if I was like, you know, if the day was particularly long. Yeah. I'd say I'm probably around an hour where there's like, and that's to me, the hour is like, that's what gets me. Cause like, oh man, like I just burned this hour. Yeah. <laughs> like, Yo, I could have done two Mario videos in that time and gotten five days ahead, you know? Yeah. The, the, yeah. I've had that attitude before. Yeah. Now though, after like recording and streaming all day, like my voice just gives out. Like I just start to get like hoarse and crackly. And I'm like, even if I wanted to record more, I probably shouldn't. <laughs> you know, I need that recovery time. But I also spend a lot of time shouting oh. at, at my colleagues. <laughs> but what the, I mean, one of the, the huge things that helped me is like, you talk about like scheduled off time. Like, yeah. I know there's like X amount of hours in the day. I'm like, hey, from here to here, like my phone's off and I'm with the family and I'm like truly there. I'm not yeah. like, you know, checking Reddit or whatever, which that's really helped because then you're focused on that time. And then when that time's over, you're like, okay, now it's time to change gears versus like not really having a schedule. Ooh, to me, time. it's like, yo. <laughs> I, no, I, do, I agree with you a hundred percent. Well, you just gotta, you gotta jump on the snake. Forehead. Unfortunately, forehead, yeah. But like, no, I think that's important. That's <laughs> like, like I work a lot, but I do see some YouTubers who are like, I work like an 80 hour work week. And I'm like, no, you don't. That's just, <laughs> that's bad time management. If you put like a, a video or two up a day, even if it's like heavily edited, I'm like, well, it depends on how time? heavily edited. Oh, Ooh. he was right there. How, how far after the blue snake? Is that, it? It's like right after. You okay. got a little, a little obstacle course, but. I liked it. It's a good level. Yeah. You do need to have ball players. It's true. 
You guys may want to go for the world record because I've probably got pro I probably have like six more attempts. Okay. Did I download it? Mantis, let me ask you this because I, I feel like you took a specific path because with um you know highly edited YouTube stuff and your I took a specific path because I killed my YouTube channel three years ago. No, but I'm saying, I was gonna ask you, what's your what's your take on Twitch and how it fits into your uh, lack well, of better for, term for, portfolio? For me specifically, Twitch yeah. is not a priority, but that's only because I have other priorities that are more important right now, yeah. like like the podcast, like that kind of thing. Um, I mean, when I stream for Twitch, I, I try to stream. I I typically try to stream a couple times a week if I can. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's a back end priority. But that's just because my career spun off in a different direction. Yeah. And who knows? I mean, I still do Twitch. I still have a presence. And if I need to pivot, I can hard pivot. But I kind of keep it just a little bit on the outskirts of my core priorities. Yeah. So that's that was my question. Is like where like in terms of your it's it's like a ancillary thing for you. Yeah. Correct. And when that was that a conscious decision or that was just hey? I well, don't it was a conscious decision. Everything. It was a conscious decision because Chiluminati ended up doing well and it demanded more of my time. Got it. And I just, I can't give everything 100% because I don't have yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Nope. I'm Did so you? dumb. I had the oh, world okay. run. Because <laughs> streaming for you, Dan, has kind of become your main priority, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I. my thing is that it's been really important. Oh! oh. For the growth of the stream and also kind of like the ryan gary prophecy where it's like hey you want to keep multiple things going i don't ever want to be behoven to one platform yeah. oh yeah mm -mm. that and yeah feel that it'll change like it'll like something in the next five years i think will change and you just i don't know i, I just when twitch like because twitch like if i go hours spent to i guess effectiveness or financial it's not even close twitch to youtube but the time i spend on both are not like the percentage breakdown you would think. Like it's like 40, 60, you know? Yeah, no, I believe that. Yeah. But but it's not because, it's not because of finances, it's because I just feel of like importance on doing that, you know? You just gotta I, kind of feel the the temperature of the water and kind yeah. of move and just move <laughs> with it. That's, I mean, you, you're not wrong. Like think about everybody, everybody's eggs were all in the YouTube basket, not even five years ago. And then Adpocalypse happened and everybody fucking like set their buildings on fire and ran around screaming. And that's just when you uh, yeah, never fully changed, recovered. Uh, their content at all. <laughs> just spend all day tweeting about how much YouTube screwed up. <laughs> it's, it's true, people don't adapt. Um, but, but I think one thing we haven't talked about, and I, you know, it's not really our business, but it's still, I think it, I don't think Ryan, you don't, Ryan, you don't like talking about stuff, like the whole mixer thing. Like, I know we didn't well, talk about it. doesn't bother it. me, no. Okay, but like, what do you do? What was your guys' take on that? Well, it, it, I I see the Mixer Twitch stuff as like the exact same as Steam Epic. So in order to not be a hypocrite, I'm like, dude, if they're going to pay for streamers to be exclusive, how else do you want a streaming platform to compete? I guess. Do, in... do you not? Does, does everybody in this world, and I, I'm not talking about YouTube, but just the audience have like the memory of a five year old? We well, had this <laughs> same conversation when YouTube jumped into streaming and they bought all the major esports championship tournaments for that year to stream exclusively on the YouTube gaming streaming platform. Mm. And people were throwing up their arms. Like, how come YouTube is spending money and, and stealing? It was like the Call of Duty one, um, League of Legends one was gonna be ex was exclusively on the YouTube streaming platform. I think it was like 2015 probably. I didn't, mm. I didn't even know that. Yeah, like they threw money at it in that time. And then what happened to YouTube gaming? They stopped and it flopped and it crashed because YouTube didn't kind of keep up with it. I'm not saying that's going to happen to Mixer, but this is that's just what companies do. They throw yeah, like, money I, at I things. I just really I don't really care. Like yeah. if my my opinion on it is like, you know, is business good good for Ninja, good for Mixer. I don't know, dude, like I so many streamers in my opinion, they feel like they need to comment on like every <laughs> piece of news that happens and I'm like I don't, you don't like Ninja leaving for Mixer the, the only thing you could argue is that like in years to come, it might have like a knock on effect, but I don't, I don't. You don't think matter. Mixer handed him a hunk of cash that no, was I, like, I mean, I'm I believe set. that they do, but like, that's none of my business. Like, what's a oh, knock yeah. on effect? What does that mean? You know, like maybe, oh, it, Ninja's responsible for 30% of the viewers on Twitch. So for him leaving for Mixer, it might start like a, 
it might be the catalyst to start, oh. you know, like a mass exodus or something like that. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I certainly don't think that's been the case at all. I don't, I don't care about, like, the business side of this industry essentially at all. I just, Why is I that? Just, well, I just, just stay in my lane and, like, you know, I'm not in the business to make moves. I'm in the business to entertain and, you mm, know, provide right. for myself and my family as well. But Well, yeah. I'm with you. I don't like. I don't give a shit that that he went to Mixer. I really don't. Like, wh who cares? Like, I saw this is tangential, but there's this game is a really arty uh, game, and they this week they announced Epic exclusivity. It's called Manifold Garden, and mm -hmm. the dev, uh, you know, was doing <laughs> what I consider like a really mature thing. You know, there was a thread about his game going Epic exclusive on Steam, or sorry, R slash Steam. Um, so you know, the comments were like pretty nasty. But he was responding to every single one of them in like a mature fashion and just mm -hmm. getting crapped on for it. But like I saw one person say like, all I can say is, you know, I would rather die than live with compromised <laughs> values, but it appears that we're not the same type of person. So like, dude, <laughs> that's what I, I think of like comments like that when I think of like, you know, I would never abandon Twitch for Mixer. I would never leave Mixer for Twitch. But I'm I can like, see you sound like, he, like that, dude. He gets sun when he only goes to PAX. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so needlessly insulting, Mathis. No, it's, it's, a, it's a pretend man that I don't know what it actually looks like. I'm not really all that worried about that it. Is and if, and if, you're, if your sentence is, I'd rather die when it comes to fucking yeah, the yeah, Epic yeah. Store, dude, if that if you're insulted by that, you got some problems. I will say, just to you know, not get raked over the coals myself, there were people in the comments that were like, hey, I understand why you would do this, because you're making... Uh, a lot of uh, money by going to Epic that wouldn't be guaranteed if you were out on Steam. But well, I have philosophical differences with the store, so I won't be paying attention. Th see, that's a fair way to present it because that's a mature way to represent how you feel. And that's cool. Like that, when I did Rebel Galaxy on the channel for a few episodes, people were freaking out because it was Epic Games exclusive. I'm like, I just want to show you guys like a cool freaking game. Like, relax. Yeah. But but people get so up in arms about it. And, they, and they're like, we're talking about how it's like a... a it's like malware or something along those lines. So I had to like Google where they were getting this. And it was, there's a bunch of articles like, no, Epic Games is not malware, no matter what people tell you, because it's not. It's just lacking a lot of what Steam has. And it may not be the, I guess, the super secure comparatively. But, but like even this, I, don't, I just don't care. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't care. I know it sounds rude, but I'm just like, it does it, you know. So, okay, okay, don't, it, it, I talked about this on Twitter about like the, the Pokemon Sword and Shield controversy. I'm like, I can get why you would be mad. What I don't understand, and I, Wait, I real feel- Real quick, what's the controversy? In like the controversy is they're, they're, they're not putting every Pokemon into the game or giving you a way to transfer every Pokemon into the game. And then they said it was because they had to make high quality animations for all the Pokemon, but instead they're reusing animations from earlier games. <laughs> okay. So you can understand why if you're a lifelong fan of Pokemon with a Pikachu avatar on Twitter and a name like you know, <laughs> Pokemon Trainer Timmy or something like that, you would be like, Game Freak is betraying me. I get that. <laughs> What I don't get is it's like the controversy started like four months ago and you're you're still dedicating your social media presence and a lot of your time, like of the one life that you get on planet Earth to being big mad about this decision online. Like, like, why, why not just be like, you know, they screwed us on this one. I'm going to not talk about or play Pokemon and I'm going to move on to something more positive or alternatively, hey, you know, I'll give him a chance and I'll, I'll reconvene and see how I feel when it's out. But instead, it's just like it's just it's like an addiction to anger online. Yeah, it's it's ve that's a really great way to put it. It really does feel like an addiction to anger. Well, do something with that anger and hit the like button <laughs> 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 on each of our videos, and then you'll feel better, maybe. But uh, this was a good one, guys. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>